Okay. I think everything is rolling now. Okay. Uh, residency info. Okay. So this is the weekend of the uh, last week of September, first week of fall. And our residency session is uh, next weekend, I guess. Uh, it's Saturday morning right now for me as I record this. Um, our residency session is um, Friday the 2nd through Sunday the 4th. And we'll go through the schedule and the, um, the assignments that we're doing um, are going to be individual. Uh, the results of the survey show that generally speaking, uh, the class doesn't have a, a strong preference. I had uh, four that wanted to do a group assignment, uh, four that wanted to do individual, and one that had no preference. So um, I'm going to make the call that um, an individual assignment would benefit um, all of you the most. And I'll discuss my reasoning for that as we go through this. And, and, uh, and the experience this coming weekend, the 2nd through the 4th of October. So here's our schedule. And remember, all of these times are Eastern time zone. And I know at least one of you is from California, which makes for an incredibly early morning. And I have no idea why the school is uh, so adamant about um, Eastern time versus, you know, one of the more central solutions because we do have people from coast to coast but anyway such it is such as it is say la vie such is life uh it's early i'm in central time zone so uh saturday and sunday morning or seven o'clock for me that's 5 a.m for you guys out in california um so that's tough so make sure you got plenty of coffee on hand if you're out in the in the west the wild wild west and hopefully you're safe if you're in the west man the fire the forest fires last few years have been just horrible um okay so uh, yeah we meet for five hours on friday and then um uh what 11 and a half minus a lunch so 10 hours on saturday and and another five hours on Sunday. So 20 hours of work, um, <clears throat> plus whatever you got to do, you know, like Saturday night um, after we conclude um, to, to finish up uh, and, and, and get a decent grade and get a decent product, product finished. 20 hours. So we will check in um, on Friday at uh, 5 Eastern and, uh, and, I'll, I'll go over uh, in more detail what we're doing for the weekend and then uh, um, have plenty of time to ask questions and whatnot. Um, there will be uh, check-in posts um, all three days uh, that I'll need you to check in. They are just uh, rabid about you students checking in <clears throat> for attendance. Um, I, I don't know if there's been issues or what, but... So uh, uh, you'll see, um, if, and if you don't check in, I'll remind you, um, uh, Friday, uh, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday morning. Um, so there's basically the schedule, uh, 5 to 10 Friday, 8 to 7.30, again, Eastern time zone, um, 8 to 7.30 Saturday, and 8 to 1 Sunday. Okay. So these are individual assignments and you'll complete three of them. Um, now you can get a little bit of preliminary work done and you, you can, and I encourage you to basically complete your practical connection assignment um, before the weekend. Um, but you'll complete uh, three assignments. The big one is uh, the one that will make or break your semester. Um, is a, a dissertation prospectus. Um, and this I'll go into in more detail, but it's basically a short description, very short description of what you would like to do for a dissertation topic. And uh, it doesn't have to be what ends up being your dissertation, but uh, I'm, go I'm going to assign you to put some good thought into it. 
because uh, it's coming up. Um, in fact, some of you are nearing the end of your coursework. And very soon, a faculty member is going to ask you, what are you doing for your dissertation? And uh, I had an excellent student last term um, that uh, had had given it no thought because it's not built into the program at all. And if it weren't for the the preparation I had given him, he would have had nothing to offer. And uh, and it would have put him behind the schedule in that course. So uh, Dr. Brown, my boss, the uh, the program coordinator for the PhD IT uh, uh, department program. Um, he, he consistently and constantly encourages us to prepare you for your dissertation journey. So that's what I'm doing rather than another group paper that blah, that one or two people really, really work hard on and the rest just kind of sit there and uh, group papers. So uh, yeah, uh, we're going to do individual, individual papers, individual presentations on Sunday. Um, so there you go. A dissertation prospectus is a short, uh, beginning description of what you will be doing, what you're, what, what you think you might like to do for your dissertation. So it's a topic of your choosing. So if you get into some, you know, rabbit hole, um, that's, it'll be of your own creation. Okay. I'm not, a, I'm not assigning this stuff. And then you, you know, making it making it hard for you this is, should be something that you you just love pick pick a topic you love uh write about what you know about um we'll uh we'll get into that a little bit more the practical and the presentation is just a, literally a powerpoint and a 10 minute uh talk a ted talk um on on what you're doing and why and why it's why it's worth looking into and um what research questions you'll ask um uh, and then the practical connection assignment, guys, this is um, where I have seen, oh, I would guess 20 to 30 percent of students get a zero because they turn in something from a previous semester or they 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 write something that's not true and uh, and wind up getting a zero. And it's a shame because this is the easiest assignment um, in a Ph.D. program, this practical connection assignment. So looking at the syllabus um, and, and the, the topics, you know, we, we've only had, what, five weeks uh, to talk about data science and visualization and uh, R and Python and uh, things like that. So you're going to have to look at the, the, the syllabus and project what might be of interest to you or what might help you in your career. So the whole intention of the practical connection assignment is to connect the course content to your professional life. Um, that you know the practic a practical connection like a practicum. Um, so uh, don't just talk about data science in general, or you'll get a zero. Uh, don't make claims about the course that aren't true because you're using, you know, an old practical connection assignment or one that you've downloaded from the internet um, because you'll get a zero. Uh, write originally, this is like a memorandum, just like a letter, a memo to, from you to me, you know, dear Dr. Walker, uh, the content of this class, um, connects to my professional assignment because I am a programmer and I've wanted to expand my learning into data science. So discussing R and Python and other data science, blah, 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 blah. A letter, a memo from you to me talking about this course, uh, its content and connecting as to why it uh, applies to your, um, your, professional life. And you can also describe why it does not, um, like blockchain, you know, if, if, if you've got no interest in that and you have some particular thoughts or observations, or you've learned some cer certain things about blockchain that you want to discuss, just make sure you're being real 
okay? Be for real, uh, which is falling on deaf ears, as they say, um, for some folks in the class. And I just, it's going to be a tragedy. And uh, I, I, I would like to avoid tragedy. So those are the three assignments. Uh, three to five page paper for the prospectus. Uh, um, and five, six slides for your presentation. No big deal. This is easy stuff if you just uh, do the work and, uh, and do it originally. Um, it'll be great practice and you'll have a, a, a start um, toward your dissertation so that you won't be caught uh, flat-footed um, when you reach your, uh, your dissertation courses. Okay, uh, so it's a paper, I, you know, I want to say three, three pages minimum, uh, five pages max. Um, but if you, if you edit it well, and you don't just put stuff in there for filler, uh, um, three, three pages will, will answer what I'm looking for. Um, so it, it's not difficult, but it needs to be three pages, three good pages. Um, of course, we're using APA format. Um, minimum of six. Uh, but I, I would think you'd, you'd have more. Um, and again, originality is key. I don't need, the, none of this is going to be background, blah, 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 uh, in this prospectus. There's no, there's no room for any uh, extensive overview. It's not going to do you any good. It's not going to get you a passing grade to fill this up with background. Uh, I'm, I'm providing a template. I'm asking for specific content, and uh, and there you go. Um, the 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 main skill uh, that this is showing is that you know how to look in the literature, and we've talked about this. And if uh, if you haven't been practicing, it's going to show. Uh, practicing going into the literature and identifying, you know, purposes and methodologies and, and why they're doing what they're doing and, and uh, all of that, why they're researching it, how it contributes. And uh, like I said, I'm providing a template uh, and I expect you to use it so that you stay on track and you don't go providing sections I haven't asked for or anything like that. Um, the presentation uh, will be Sunday, um, and I'll I'll also provide a template. Uh, um, if you want to put detailed points, use the speaker notes section of PowerPoint. If you don't know what speaker notes or the notes section of a slide is in PowerPoint, um, shoot me an email and I'll uh, I'll do a screenshot or something and show you. Well, I'll I'll do it right now. Some people don't know. You see down here, click to add notes. Sometimes you can, you know, here I can put notes. Okay. Uh, some people don't know where that is. And sometimes PowerPoint hides it way down here, way down here. And you, you can't even really tell that there is such thing as a notes pick if you haven't worked in PowerPoint. So you grab that gray line. And where it says click to add notes, that's where you do. So if you want to do a, uh... <laughs> oh. <sighs> beg your pardon. Um, if you want to do extensive speaker notes, like a script, things that you want to make sure that you cover, uh, put them in the speaker notes and turn them in with your, along with your assignment. Um, uh, be prepared to take questions from your classmates and me. Um, I, uh, I may institute something where I call on one or two of you and make you ask a question. Because in my experience, no one is listening. You're all still working on your practical connection assignment or your paper, and you're not actually listening to your classmates and you're not learning from each other. Um, with the, with a couple of exceptions and, um, and I'm, I may, I may do that, uh, technique where I just call on somebody to say, Hey, got a question. So your presentation should be about 10 minutes. 
um, for everybody's sake, uh, get a he headset and microphone. Okay. Every week you get nice, clear audio from me because I wear a headset and a boom microphone and it is a little uncomfortable. It is. And yes, they cost $20. Please, please use one. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, some folks I've, I've been on zoom meetings with, you can't understand them. Um, so if I can't understand you, um, it, it, it's not a good thing. Um, some of these webcams sound like you're speaking from the bottom of a, a barrel. Um, so, you know, we've all been working from home, I would think, uh, and using Zoom for pretty much everything. So, yeah. Headset and microphone, please. Or at least a microphone. I, I, I've never used a microphone without a headset. Okay, so that's the presentation. Um, it's very much like what I'm doing every week. You see me giving you a PowerPoint presentation with bullets on PowerPoint every week. So you get to be the lecturer, the professor on Sunday morning. Uh, okay. Um, like I said, the university is, uh, is under a lot of scrutiny for attendance. So you'll need a camera. Absolutely. Uh, and like I said, you know, headset and microphone, uh, typical laptop setup. Um, but the camera has to work. Uh, it has to, or you will not get credit for the residency session. So please don't email me and say, my camera doesn't work. Go buy a webcam. Um, like I said, if I can't take attendance, you won't get credit and it's, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, so you'll need to show a government ID. What they suggest is your uh, driver's license. But if you're uncomfortable with having like your address or the driver's license number recorded, um, you're, uh, you're free to put a little piece of uh, like a, maybe a post-it note or scotch tape or something over, over. I need to see your picture and your name. That's it. Um, so there you go. Mask any PII, personally identifiable information that you don't want recorded. Okay. So don't be late. Okay. We're not sure. Tra nobody's traveling. Um, so, uh, wherever you're going to do this residency session, you know, wherever you got good, strong internet and a comfortable chair and access to coffee and snacks. Um, you know, we're getting together at four, four o'clock central. Friday, which is right around supper time, and we don't get a supper break. So have snacks. And Saturday uh, evening, uh, we don't uh, we don't get a supper break. We get a lunch break. We don't get a supper break. So you know, make sure you got snacks available, or or um, you, you're not going to want to have to go out during the residency session. Um, but again, don't be late. Don't be late. Um, I'll, uh, I'll post my, in fact, I'm going to tell you, uh, my cell phone number right now. I'm not going to post it anywhere where it can be scraped and used. I'm going to tell you my cell phone number. And if you have any problems, call me or text me and let me know that you're having issues. Um, uh, but the main thing is to just not wait until the last minute, you know, uh, and make sure that you're able to, to view this classroom. I'll, I'll be emailing you a link to a, uh, a video chat tool, uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which is what is, is used in Blackboard. And um, you'll, want, you'll want to click on that link and it, it should say, you know, there's nobody else in the classroom, but it should, it should let you in. Um, if you are very conscientious and you'd like to, uh, uh, to meet synchronously, um, and, and just double check all of your, your technical stuff. I can meet, um, and, you know, like, uh, pretty much any evening after seven, between like say seven and 9 PM central, uh, pretty much any evening or, uh, most of the day, Tuesday during the day or Thursday during the day. 
Um, if you are worried that you might have connectivity issues and you want to, you want to just practice, um, uh, go ahead. I mean, I'll show you how this, this little tool works. It's a lot like zoom. I'll, I'll show you how blackboard collaborate ultra, uh, works. Uh, if you haven't used it in previous sessions, um, on Friday night. Um, but let me know. You can be early, but don't be late. I'll, I'll turn, I'll, I'll be in the classroom probably about what quarter to four Friday and um, we will check in for attendance um, oh sorry yeah that's that's from last that's from last time uh, we'll check in once on Friday twice on Saturday and once on Sunday um, so just I mean you'll be there anyway so I'll just tell you if it's going to be attendance or not but make sure you got that ID ready uh, photo and name um, now, a research prospectus um, is, is really just kind of a short formatted outline of what you would like to do for your dissertation. Um, now, you, you've probably heard of a research proposal, and that is the pretty much the full length chapters one, two, and three of your dissertation. Uh, chapter one is, is an introduction to the dissertation, not the topic. It's an introduction to the entire dissertation. Um, much, much, much longer than an abstract. Uh, but, you know, you should have been reading dissertations by now. Uh, lots of them. Um, so I'm sure you've seen all this, but chapter one is an introduction to the dissertation that covers everything, covers the topic, the problem, the research question, the methodology, uh, the gap in the literature that you're addressing, everything. Um, chapter two is your review of the literature, and that proves to your committee that you have mastered the literature that tells a story um, that that pretty much describes why and how uh, you came to where you're at in, in conducting your research and why it's valid, why it, it, uh, it, it's an appropriate thing to do because you will have identified a gap in the literature um, using at least one author, but likely you'll use several. And again, I, I've, you know, I propose. I, I posted my dissertation. You guys are welcome to ask me questions about my my dissertation. Of course, I haven't even looked at it in in a while, so I'd have to go back and read it myself. But uh, it made sense when I wrote it. <laughs> I'm sure it still does. Um, so these are the four areas that I'm going to have you cover in in this prospectus. The university does not have, uh, or at least hasn't shared. Uh, with me as an ITS 832 and 836 and I, another master's course. Anyway, I don't teach research methodology, research preparation courses with uh, University of the Cumberlands. Um, so this will get you started if they've got a particular in, in the future. Um, if they have a particular research prospectus format, uh, great. Uh, this will This will just be good practice for you. Um, to get you started. Like, so that's, that's my intention is to just to get you started. No kidding. Into the, getting in the, into the literature and, and, and justifying what it is that you're looking at um, specifically. So you'll talk about a, a problem or opportunity that you've seen yourself in professional life. Um, so start thinking about it. You know, this could be anything related to your uh, your concentration in the PhD ID pr IT program. Um, so this could be, you know, a, a problem with, um, uh, you know, if you're doing blockchain, it could be, it, it, you could identify a problem with uh, um, the validity of transactions in some area that hasn't, you know, been examined very thoroughly. Or if you're a software engineer, maybe it's, you know, a software development methodology like Agile or DevOps or, um, Maybe it's if it's data and data science. Maybe you are uh, you're gonna you're gonna look at the performance of maybe I don't know Java versus Python. There's been work done in R versus Python, but it's certainly not exhaustive. But um, you, you won't 
probably be developing anything new as your research project for your dissertation. Um, I've posted resources uh, from the university, Dr. Brown, my boss, about choosing a topic. And uh, nowhere in there will you see um, a PhD student's research looked at as being developing something new. You're not going to write a new programming language for your dissertation. That's not the kind of research and development we're talking about. That's R&D. Um, so you're, you're, you're going to research an existing phenomenon or problem um, that has been described in the literature. So uh, think about something that you have seen. For me, it was uh, people coming and going in an organization, and when you delete their emails, uh, everything they said, everything they thought, everything they worked on gets deleted. And if you use shared drives to store documents as a knowledge repository, they turn into snarls because people come and go, and, and, and there's very little discipline, and, and you get you know, bad, or no file management, no knowledge management. So if all you have is email and the operating system file system, uh, it turns into a, a mess. So that was basically the problem that I examined and I found that it had been worked on uh, myriad ways in the literature and I justified my problem in my dissertation. Uh, so you need to think about something you have seen yourself that is a problem that has to do with your concentration. That's the thing, okay? Now, a research question isn't just an area. You know, a research question isn't cloud computing, okay? That's not a question. <laughs> uh, we've talked about these elements, these dissertation elements, uh, um, and there's lots and lots and lots of information uh, about them um, out on the internet. So you will, you will answer a research question. Now, if it's quantitative, you know, what is, what is the, uh, you'll, you'll have, you know, hypothesis, a null hypothesis, uh, uh, you know, software development methodology has no, uh, effect on, uh, productivity. That's your null hypothesis. And then, you know, maybe you go do surveys or, or something and you collect data to, to look at those, look at whether, you know, whether they have a software methodology or they don't, or, you know, uh, anyway, so you, you'll have quantitative research questions. You'll have qualitative research questions. You know, how do users, how do users feel about, uh, you know, um, mobile phone use at work and its effect on productivity? So you would, you would probably do a qualitative study where you would ask people how they felt about their coworker constantly looking at their phone when they should be working. And you can't do your work if they don't do their work, but they're always on Snapchat or TikTok. So anyway, so there are quantitative research questions, qualitative research questions. The research question dictates how you conduct the research. Um, but uh, if you don't know what a, re a good research question is, look it up. You've got all week uh, to get ready for this weekend. Um, and then uh, you'll have a purpose statement for your research. A purpose, the purpose of your research might just be to inform practitioners uh, on, a, on a given phenomenon so that they can make better decisions within their organization. It, your, the purpose of your, your, your research might be to test a theory in a, in a given, in a new way that hasn't been, hasn't been tested against the theory. Um, uh, but I don't want to get too far into uh, methodology and theoretical frameworks and all of that this weekend. Um, I don't want to get too deep into all of that, but think about why, you know, what would your research accomplish? Okay. Um, and then a literature gap. Um, you will see if you are reading articles and whatnot, uh, appropriately and especially looking at dissertations, um, you'll see where a literature gap is described. Generally speaking, um, once you really start looking at a problem area, you'll find that there's an enormous gap in many, many places. <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of research that can be done. A lot of people worry, a lot of students worry about uh, um, like identifying this gap like, like it's a physical place on earth that, that has to exist. It's, uh, 
it's it's conceptual. It's an intellectual gap in the literature. And read my dissertation. Look at how I described the the gap in the literature. I I, I you know I, I talked about certain authors pointing towards the gap in the literature, and that's that's how you will you will you will see this in um, when researchers discuss the limitations of their study um, and how it might be done differently in the future. That's that's a potential gap. Um, don't read too much into the the whole gap in the liter literature. Don't let that slow you down. If you can find, uh, you know, three or four researchers um, that all make recommendations for future research that is what you're planning on doing, uh, then, you then you'll be fine. It's, it's, you know, writing is an art form. Um, crafting an argument. This is almost like, you know, defining the literature gap and defending your research is almost like a lawyer making his case in court for either you know a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict. You have to be uh, a the master of your uh, your your topic. Um, the, you know, at the doctoral level, you've already got a master's degree in computer science. Um, so this is where you are now mastering um research and and extending the body of knowledge this is why at the beginning of this course i always say it's not another master's degree this is not about advanced coursework um other than to put that coursework in the context of a future research project that is your dissertation now i i don't always get that point across but uh there you go so these are the four things you're going to do it's this is not tough this three to five pages um, you've got all week uh, to start thinking about this, and then, um, but, but, I've I've been encouraging you all along to collect literature. So hopefully you've been listening to me and you've been actually uh, doing that. And now it's just time to kind of write it up. Um, but everything that you read my dissertation, everything that you write uh, up will need to be justified in the literature. Okay, um, so you can't have any areas where somebody can say, says who? Says who? You can't make statements that are, that are un, 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 undocumented, uh, um, not as a student. Um, they call it having standing. So that's the prospectus. All right, guys, and I'll go into this uh, more and have some some. Uh, um, examples and whatnot uh, on Friday. Okay, keep an eye on your email this week um, for the link to the classroom and other nuggets. Um, some of you owe me uh, more than one email. I've asked you questions in your papers and you have not replied. You have not answered those questions. Um, I, I don't want to have to go back to those papers and change the grade to a zero, but I don't ask questions rhetorically. Uh, generally speaking, I, I want an answer. If I asked you where somebody addressed something um, in, an, in a, a source, you need to respond to me um, and let me know where that, where that source uh, said that. Um, uh, some of you owe me uh, just emails I have sent you, not 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 embedded questions in your your assignments, but I've actually sent you emails asking you questions. Uh, I need those answers. Okay, at the uh, in the uh, in the syllabus, you're going to see a week six research paper due on October fourth, but that's our residency weekend. So what the university has us do is, is adjust, uh, not the syllabus, but adjust the assignments themselves to reflect the reality of the, the, um, the residency weekend because it, it isn't the same for every section. Um, so you will have your, that week eight paper uh, that, or the, the week eight topic and it says no assignment due um, we'll, we'll, we will have the, the, the 20 points for this week's week six paper will be due in week eight. 
So the only thing that's due on October 4th are your residency, your three residency um, um, assignments. So if there's any questions on that, shoot me an email. Uh, and I will likely combine uh, this week. Um, seems like week eight was challenges in big data. And this one is integrating big data analysis with a, uh, a more traditional conventional BI business intelligence um, program, which is uh, tough. Uh, BI really does kind of depend on, on pretty traditional. Anyway, that, that's for, that's for the future. Um, okay, guys, answer my questions. Do not ignore me uh, or we won't get through this semester together. Okay. Um, I, I want to hear from you if I have asked you questions. And that is that. Like I said, keep an eye on your email. I will see you all Friday evening on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra.